Gallimera, Gallimera, Gallimera. Good morning, good morning, good morning. What a beautiful morning. Uh, as you can see, a little bit of cloud just over the top of the hills, uh, looking down towards uh, Amber Lockerbie and also down towards Kerry. A little bit of a sad morning this morning, as you're probably all aware that uh, Captain Tom passed away yesterday uh, from pneumonia and also uh, effects of coronavirus. Uh, and what a loss it has been uh, to, the, to, uh, to everybody, not just the United Kingdom, but everybody just across the world. Um, he became a bit of a, an icon for what's going on at the moment with the virus. And it's such a shame that in some ways, even though he lived to a ripe old age of 100, he kind of left a little bit too early and uh, should have been here for the, hopefully, the end of COVID or whatever whenever whatever changes and we get back to some sort of normality so once again bless you uh captain uh tom looking down from wherever you are hopefully your mates met you yesterday when you arrived and uh took you into the special bar for a quick one old terry from uh blacky blank might have been there to wish you well as well as your boys that you lost You're going to be missed. Cheers, fella. Anyway, let's have a quick look <clears throat> at today then. So, as you can see, the weather here is uh, a lot better than what it has been. Beautiful sunshine. Uh, looking round to the back of the house. Oh, once you get into that sun, it's so warming. It's absolutely lovely. So, uh, basically, uh, there you go. This is... The weather today it's glorious hopefully jane's got the washing on <laughs> everybody else has got their washing on as well uh got a few people looking in uh wiggy win stanley over there in cyprus has been tuning in chat thank cheers for your little chat this morning fella i'm going to be looking into that as to uh find out a bit more about what you've said i'm not going to say too much here at the moment uh Sean Webb says, you lucky sod ginge. <laughs> the weather is nice, I should think. You're all got slush and snow where you are underfoot. Trust me, it's been absolutely chucking it these last few days. And it's nice to have a bit of sunshine. Even the chickens are warming themselves in the sun as well. Uh, so it looks absolutely lovely. Anyway, let's get on with the news because I'm afraid the news here is not good at the moment. There's been a lot happening uh, within the last 24 hours. I've also been rewriting the news this morning as well. So I'll warn you now, the news is just a little bit COVID heavy, all right, um, for what's happening here in Zakynthos and also what's happening across here in Greece as well. And I've just noticed me little... Uh, icon to turn the camera around to face me seems to have disappeared let me just see if i can find that ah oh well for some reason i've lost me i've lost me ah oh, no it's back here we go found it right switching the camera around now so you can see my dulcet tones here we go right okay let's have a look at what's been going on in the last 24 hours it's the 3rd of February today, uh, 2021. It's a Wednesday and uh, half day closing uh, for us here on a Wednesday. And it is day 88, 89. Let's beg to differ, all right? Right, COVID in the last 24 hours. Well, it's not looking good at the moment. Uh, in fact, infections were recorded yesterday and we've had a bit of a spike, a big spike to be quite honest. Now, one thing we've got to bear in mind, more testing is done, more cases are found. How many of these are false positives? We don't know, but this is the stats at the moment, all right? So, uh, we had 1,261 new infections across Greece, which was up on the day before, where we had 543. That means the grand total of infections since the uh, pandemic started has been 158,716, of which 52% are male. Once again, uh, just because we've had a big spike like that, it doesn't necessarily mean that they are all people who've got the COVID, all right? It could just be false positives as well, all right? So 18 were identified at entries into the country. That is up as well from 12 on the previous time. Uh, Kefalonia, 
has had two new cases of uh, COVID reported, and so has Corfu. They've had one. Now, Zakynthos, uh, we've had another two cases here on the island. Now, these two cases are not yet on the national stats. The national stats for yesterday only showed the five cases of the day before. Now, the two new cases, uh, the first was a 26-year-old kindergarten teacher. Uh, she was suffering from mild symptoms. She was tested positive at the hospital and uh, she was then uh, allowed to go home and quarantine them for 14 days. Now, a few hours later, there was a second case, which was a four-year-old boy, which is also worrying. He'd uh, been taken to the hospital with mild symptoms and later in the afternoon was tested positive um, and is considered to be a contact of the uh, kindergarten teacher. So anyway, it's not been said what's happened with the with the boy, whether the boy's been sent home to quarantine or whether the boy is in the actual COVID clinic at the moment in the hospital. But it is kind of worrying uh, when you consider that um, Zakynthos has had 37 positive cases since the beginning of the year. All right. And just this month, and we're only into the day three of the month, we've had seven positive cases here where people have actually uh, contracted the virus and actually suffered the symptoms of it. So what is worrying also is that it seems that young people are also contracting uh, the virus as well, whereas before young people were, you know, kind of not getting it. Uh, it seems uh, we've already had a 10 year old boy who's contracted it. We've also got this four year old lad who's contracted it. And now we've had um, and we also had a nine day old baby that also contracted the virus as well. And again, it is worrying times. And I'm going to come on to something else a little bit later in that area. Um, as regards deaths, um, deaths at the moment are down at the moment across Greece. Uh, we had 33 deaths the other day I'd reported. Yesterday, there was 22 new deaths. Uh, that bringing the total amount of deaths across the country since the uh, pandemic started uh, to 5,851. The average age of those people was 79 years of age. 95.4% of those people were had underlying health conditions or were over the age of 70 as well. Now, uh, to put that into context, all right, the average daily death rate in Greece uh, in 2019, long before the rise up of, um, of COVID, was uh, approximately 329 deaths a day. All right. So that kind of puts it into perspective. Now, when it comes to critical cases in hospitals, people in ICUs, good news there is those numbers are down as well. All right. Uh, I last reported to you there were 248 people in hospital on ICUs. Um, that number has now dropped down to 244, of which 178 are male and 66 are female. And the average age of people in ICUs is around about 68 years of age. And 86.5% of those are actually suffering underlying health issues or are over the age of 70. Now, this morning, uh, Stop Press News, I've um, quickly translated this. Some of it, um, uh, it might be a little bit, a bit uh, vague, uh, but I've done this very quickly. But I wanted to actually get this story out as fast as possible uh, so that people realise just how lucky we are to be here in Zakynthos in a lot of respects. Um, the president of the Employees Association, Petros Gilomanis, expressed his complete uh, disagreement with the transfer of staff from the intensive care unit of the Zakynthos Hospital uh, on the occasion of another transfer that took place a few months ago. All right. The fact that the ICU is being, in his words, defrosted by specialist personnel has signalled an alarm uh, to the hospital and it is requested to stop any further bleeding of absolutely necessary human resources. So basically there are people who are wanting to leave working in the hospital in the ICU area. Anyway, uh, the president of the association said, I am ventricle and we said it again when the issue arose with the previous colleague who came to the Government Gazette 
for her transfer without us knowing it. Now, the way that the medical system works here in Greece is that you are sent like a teacher to where you are required, all right? Um, and sometimes people don't have a lot of say in where they go. And so they're put into a position, or shall we say they're posted to a position, and they stay there for as long as they can. And some people, once they arrive, they want to go. Anyway, this has happened where staff who obviously didn't want to be in Zakynthos because they're not from the local area are then going and asking for a transfer, but not going through, uh, so we say, the channels of telling the hospital and then the hospital then obviously having a bit of a counselling session and then saying, are you really sure you want to go? We don't want to lose you at this time. We do need you. Uh, we want you to stay. Uh, but basically going to where the regional health are and saying, I want to transfer, I want to move because for whatever reason, probably from the fact that they're not near from where they came from. So anyway, um, the um, the governor, the the, uh, the the leader of the the president of the workers' association, then said um, uh, they had done enough trouble as we, the association, pushed the governor, the MP, and the six health region, which is what Zakynthos falls under. Uh, we have the sea that separates us from the opposite shore of the islands. Islands larger than us, and this is very important, uh, do not have ICUs and may not have doctors and staff, etc. So uh, what they're saying is that Zakynthos is very lucky to have the resources that it has here on the island, and it definitely does not want to lose any more highly qualified staff that run those locations uh, and basically deal with the patients that arrive there. Anyway, as he further says, some people fought for the ICU to operate and to be staff. Um, and they call the, the ICU she, that's just a Greekism in the translation, but they say she is so useful to us. And now that the auxiliary staff has arrived, we have got to get her to work with all the beds. We do not have any issues with our colleagues, but the ICU must always be staffed, uh, the president said. And anyway, the president then explained something else about the intensive care unit. It is not simple. It is not possible to take a person from the emergency room and take him to another clinic. The ICU needs specialized people who need one year of specialization. How do you, how do they leave after that and expose us? Here we have the mistake. Colleagues who are on the move and can leave Zakynthos at any time should not be placed in Shut's key positions. Anyway, the colleague uh, does not belong to our RIA. Now, I think RIA means the Regional uh, Health Authority, uh, who obviously, uh, uh, they obviously move people around the Regional Health Authorities. And um, basically, if they wanted somewhere else and there's a job there for someone else, they can obviously move there. Anyway, we must be careful with in our movements and in how we choose the individuals. There are five people who want to move and we have forbidden it. Uh, Mr. Calabasas, who is the governor of our health uh, district. And as a union, I told him it would stir up a storm on our island if anyone moved. This is the case uh, escaped us because there were two different RIA. So there were two different regional health authorities involved in this. And basically, um, the other health authority seems to be winning out over our people here. And so that's why people are being moved. I'm going to leave that story there because I think there's a lot more uh, to come out of that. Uh, but basically, uh, we are lucky on this island that we actually have an ICU. Yes, we've had some... Um, a, only uh, a couple of patients moved to, to like Rio and places uh, like that with a bigger uh, specialization unit. And um, and that is because basically of age, uh, especially with a nine day old baby. Um, the people here obviously didn't feel qualified to be able to, to treat that child and it needed to be moved to another location. But anyway, we're going to keep an eye on that story. Again, the hospital has been, uh, shall we say, at the forefront of what's been going on here and also uh, been for controversy from the doctors, from the management. Uh, but at the end of the day, the hospital is still doing a good job. It's doing what it can. And, and uh, we are, as the gentleman there from the Workers Association said, very, very lucky to have it and to have 
a new modern hospital in comparison to other locations and to have our own ICU unit as well. And what's interesting as well, our ICU unit hasn't been put under the same pressure as maybe the one in Corfu, uh, which has had to bring people from other parts of the country there for treatment. So um, our ICU some, in some ways has been uh, under the radar uh, in regards to uh, other areas where patients could be brought in from outside uh, onto the island for treatment. But anyway, we'll keep an eye on that story and I'll let you know if I hear any more information on it. Anyway, um, also, again, this is sort of in relation to the earlier story about uh, younger people contracting the virus. It says uh, a report came out yesterday published in Greece that long COVID, uh, the debilitating long term effects experienced by many patients uh, who have uh, recovered from COVID-19 has been shown to affect children as well as adults. Anyway, doctors at the University Hospital in Italy had been monitoring the health of 129 children and adolescents who had been infected with the virus, including those who had experienced few, if any, symptoms of the virus. Anyway, they found that after five months of the, of the, uh, uh, so I say it again, they found that after five months of first being diagnosed, and having uh, uh, COVID-19, only 42% of children had fully recovered. Anyway, about one in three young people still had one or two symptoms of the disease, uh, while more than one in five had three or more symptoms. Anyway, ongoing symptoms including insomnia, uh, breathing problems, chest pain, nasal congestion, fatigue, uh, uh, muscle and joint pains and difficulty in concentrating. I think I've got all of those, <laughs> to be honest. Anyway, uh, the UK Medical Journal, uh, The Lancet, has confirmed, uh, as uh, this is another story, um, also as well yesterday, the uh, UK Medical Journal, The Lancet, has confirmed that Sputnik 5, what a name, uh, the COVID-19 vaccine developed in Russia, has been shown in trials to give around about 92% protection. Anyway, the vaccine joins the ranks of, of other proven vaccines alongside the Pfizer Biotech, the Oxford and AstraZeneca, uh, the Modron and the Janssen, uh, which work in similar ways to the Oxford uh, AstraZeneca drugs. So there we go. The Russians are now coming in with their version of a vaccine. Uh, will it be any better? Uh, will we see it? Uh, will it get released? Uh, will anybody accept it? Uh, because, again, James is doing a little bit of research on that this morning. And there is a, um, a sort of a, a mistrust at the moment uh, with what Russia is uh, going to put out. But if they're using it on their own people, again, don't know, even not, not very sure what the figures are for Russia in the way of how it's been coping with the virus. If, in fact, they've actually had any problems with the virus uh, that they've been honest to tell us about. Anyway, again, going back to COVID here on Zakynthos, today and Thursday, uh, they're going to be retesting of municipality staff. That's going to take place after the first test last Friday, you may remember, where two people were found to be positive with the virus. Uh, the deputy mayor and also a cleaner, uh, they contracted the virus and they went into home quarantine. Anyway, a new system for processing the staff is beginning today, which will employ uh, which will hopefully rectify the issues they had last Friday when there was mass testing of 200 uh, people together, uh, which prompted criticism about the handling uh, and the testing at the Vanato building uh, where there was a danger of cross-contamination. You might remember at the moment City Hall has been closed for further disinfecting and that's going to stay uh, closed until Wednesday, uh, next Wednesday, I think, from what I understood from the article. Anyway, uh, today at noon, um, what's going to happen is uh, the inspection of the Central City Hall staff will begin, uh, followed by the employment employees of Vanato and then the facilities of the Exena building in town. They're going to be checked uh, as well on Thursday. Um, and also um, the Exena building is uh, where the waste management now offices are and they're going to be uh, checked and it seems like the bin men uh, are going to be uh, checked as well uh, as part of their things. The only thing that hasn't been mentioned in the press and this is where I'm a little bit critical about this is to are the people to be tested going to be tested where they work or 
by the Mobile Health Authority or are they going to meet somewhere and be tested? So it's a little bit vague as to where they're going to be tested. Uh, however, they are going to be tested over the next two days. All right. To see um, if anybody may have had a late contraction of the virus itself. Um, also, as well, another big story breaking in Corfu at the moment. Uh, the health minister, uh, the Greek health minister, Vasily Kyriakidas, has ordered the removal of the manager of Corfu's health centre after the media reportedly claimed that um, uh, that sorry, after media reports claimed that a local journalist and media owner was uh, allowed to jump the queue and get vaccinated. Uh, the minister also ordered the governor of the sixth health district, is the same district that uh, Zakynthos is under. Um, to open an investigation to establish whether the priority criteria set by the National Vaccination Committee had in fact been violated. Now, according to the newspaper Documento, uh, the local journalist uh, Dionis Malos, uh, who is uh, the president of the board of the local Corfu TV, was vaccinated on January 29th, along with 17 other people. Although he did not meet any of the conditions required to receive the jab as it was as a matter of priority. Anyway, responding to the furor in the local community, uh, the Corfu Health Centre manager, Alexandra Skerakos, uh, claimed that there was only one jab left. No one else uh, could be given it on that day. Uh, normally, we would be giving it to a member of the medical staff or to the Coast Guard or to the Army or the Hellenic Police, but no one was interested. This is what he said. Anyway, the health centre manager was quoted as telling, local, uh, telling a local website, adding that Malonis had expressed a wish to be vaccinated. There is nothing wrong with the issue or a scandal, he said. Uh, we could not throw away the vaccine uh, and added that the local journalist just happened to be there. Well, anyway, we're going to let, let that story run its course and obviously keep an eye on that. Um, also, another story of loads of things, as I, as I reported, um, uh, coming on. Um, Monday also saw uh, the European Union uh, tighten its rules for visitors from outside the bloc, specifying that they would only be allowed in freely from countries with very few coronavirus cases and also none of the more transmissible variants. Anyway, EU ambassadors agreed the new um, measure for travel from non-EU countries. Now, this includes Britain as well, and a meeting in Brussels. And EU, uh, and an EU diplomat told Reuters, uh, under the recommendations on non-essential travel, EU countries are encouraged to grant access without restrictions, such as mandatory quarantines, only under strict criteria. Uh, the visitor... Uh, would have to come from a country with no more than 25 COVID-19 cases per 100,000 people over 14 days, an infection rate lower than in all the EU countries. The text also says that travel curbs would also rapidly be reintroduced for countries where a high incidence of more infectious corona variants is detected. Uh, the agreement by EU countries covers non-essential travel and serves as a guideline for EU countries uh, which have the ultimate say on their border policies. Anyway, some EU countries such as Germany have imposed tougher restrictions while Belgium has banned non-essential travel into uh, or out of the country until March. Anyway, last Thursday, the bloc cut Japan from its list of countries uh, from which travellers can visit uh, the uh, visit the block without uh, COVID related restrictions. Uh, the list now consists of seven countries, Australia, China, New Zealand, Rwanda, Singapore, South Korea and Thailand. Although China's inclusion is dependent on China allowing in EU visitors. All right. So it looks like the restrictions have got tougher. I just want to reiterate a story that I said yesterday in which uh, I was actually technically wrong um, when I said about the 14 day quarantine that Boris has set up uh, for people flying in 
uh, from hot spots. Now, we're not a hot spot at the moment, as in the Zakynthos might be in the red zone, Attica might be in the red zone, Thessaloniki might be in the red zone. Um, however, Greece is not in the red zone in the overall picture of things, about the £1,500 uh, payment for quarantine. I did say yesterday that you were not obliged to pay it. However, there has been a change of the policy. Um, it is up to a nation to actually say to the British government, we don't agree with this policy uh, because it's got going to be good for us. And um, also, the nation themselves are the ones that have redress with the World Health Organization, not the individual. So until uh, a nation decides to take Britain to court and say, we think this £1,500 uh, on a 14-day quarantine is out of order, Boris, if you want to do that, you should be paying it. Uh, it takes another country to dispute that. So I just want to clear that fact up. Jane was on me yesterday uh, for, for, for giving you a bit of duff gen there. So uh, anyway, so we will keep an eye on that. Right, finally, um, a mixed story as an unfinally story. OK, this could be opening the door on something. Uh, but anyway... Amazon Web Services announced uh, that they will soon open their first office in Athens as part of the uh, conglomerate's ongoing investment in Greece. Now, the firm had previously opened a cloud front location uh, in Athens and additionally an AWS office, that's Amazon World Ser Web Services office, uh, has been seen as another important development which grew out of the Memorandum of Understanding which was signed in 2020 with the country's Ministry of Digital Governance. Anyway. Amazon says that in addition to these uh, on the ground services, this will help Greece compete by building a modern economic economy powered by cloud computing. So your cloud information is going to be stored here in Zakynthos. Anyway, uh, Cameron Brooks, a director of public sector Europe at Amazon Web Services, said that he was impressed by how the city nurtures its innovators and reinvents itself thanks to technology placing Greece at the forefront of the digital economy. Now, I would kind of dispute that. Um, what would make p people a lot easier to do business, whether it's on the web or whether it's opening the shop, is to cut down on bureaucracy that is required just to get a business going. All right. So, again, I think Amazon are talking with stars in their eyes. However... I'm very suspicious of Amazon's activities. I know some people will be going, well, when's the warehouse coming uh, to make delivery of parcels and goods a lot easier? Just remember this. New York didn't want Amazon to set up a warehouse in Manhattan because New York knew that you let Amazon in, zero-hour contract jobs. Uh, they employ you when they want you. They don't pay any corporate tax. And somebody actually on one of the other bulletin boards and the Greasy's bulletin board said, I think the th tax threshold is too high uh, for businesses to come in from outside because uh, it should be set at zero. Anyway, <laughs> yes, I had to laugh at that. Um, the Greek government notoriously taxes high businesses and uh, businesses do struggle to survive. And remember... And remember, if a business wants to close because it's not been successful in its first year, you're expected to pay the tax that that business would have probably earned if it had been successful. So Greece really does need to change its tax laws uh, to be able to be more flexible and to encourage business to come through. Bringing a corporation in is not going to do much, I'd say, for the ordinary man on the street here in Greece. Uh, it might be great for uh, for Amazon as, oh, this could be another place to launder our profits in the way that they laundered their profits through the, uh, through the um, Irish banks. Uh, but I do feel very sceptical about this uh, running uh, to, uh, to bring Amazon in uh, without any controls on them. But anyway, we'll see what happens uh, from that measure. Right, anyway, I see a lot of comments here. 
uh, from people at the moment. Thank you for those people staying with the broadcast. It has been a bit of a long one today. Uh, Teresa Ann Huggett is watching. Give you a wave, my lovely. Sean Webb is watching. Uh, Wiggy Wynn Stanley over there in Cyprus is watching as well. Uh, Sean Webb says, lucky sod. <laughs> yeah, about the weather. Uh, Martin Taylor is watching. Rosewood is watching as well. Alan Woodhouse is watching too. Uh, Calorica Spiros is watching as well. Thank you for tuning in as well. Uh, Andy Spencer is watching as well. Oh, just a quick point. I was very shocked, actually, because I actually um, put this broadcast up on LinkedIn uh, as well as on Facebook and on YouTube um, as uh, going out. I actually did a message from the Prime Minister's office, actually, from the uh, media spokesman for the Greek government, actually dropped me a little hello, nice to meet you, and uh, if you need any help, please, uh, my door is open. So I was quite shocked at that, that uh, a man on his balcony broadcasting in the early morning uh, is uh, actually getting a little bit of uh, notoriety from uh, from up uh, on our Athens. So again, I will hold you to your word, sir, and if there's anything I want to check on, I will be the first to ask you. Oh, and also as well, I've reached out to um, uh, Mr. Viravakis as well. Uh, I also tweet as well. Uh, my show goes on to tweet. I forgot to mention tweet, uh, Twitter. And uh, I've reached out to him just to ask him if he could, if possible, um, when he puts his tweets out, put his tweets out in English as well as in Greek, uh, because it's a bit more difficult to translate Twitter uh, in, into another language. It's not uh, a good platform for uh, translation. You've got to literally cut and paste and put it through. But I just thought, because his English is great, um, maybe he should not forget he has a lot of expatriate people here who, like myself, voted for his party, Emir 25, uh, on the last local elections, uh, just to put out his thoughts and words about what's going on uh, with the economy, uh, the Greek economy, that is, as well as international economy, and also um, about what's happening as well, because uh, it'd be nice to have his little uh, input as well. So anyway, just thought I'd let you know. Anyway, Barry Leatherdale is also watching. Uh, Shane Double O O'Donnell is watching as well. Nice to see you. Oh, Amanda Gregory is here. I'm hoping for a weather forecast from you, Amanda. Uh, Frank Proud is watching. Good old Raf Reg, buddy. Nice to see you tuning in here. Amy Pratt is also watching as well. Paul Bruffy is watching up there in Poros. I uh, hope the weather is up there nice for you as well, fella. Uh, Hilary Rogers is watching. Bless you, Hilary. Nice to have you tuning in. Oh, Amanda Gregory's weather forecast for today. Uh, morning, hun. Sunshine today with some cloud will be warm in the sun and enjoy. Thank you very much. I like that little concise uh, weather forecast. Saves me a job. Thank you, my darling. Um, Janice Skirm is also watching. Raffredge friend as well. Nice to see you. How's your hubby? How's Taff getting on? All right. Uh, Hilary Rogers says, Morning, Ginge from Azani Zakynthos. Yes, it is sunny. Uh, Pauline Patterson is also watching as well. Nice to see you here. Jim Crossland is here as well. Uh, Steve Hinkland, uh, who's been rebooking holidays. All right. Uh, he says, good morning, Ginge. Uh, jealous of the weather. Hope you and Jane are well. Have a good day. Yes, we are lovely. It's a day for doing your washing. Uh, Julie Halloran is watching as well. Uh, Julie Halloran says, morning, Ginge. Angie Johnson is watching. Steve Thompson is watching. Uh, Julie Halloran says... Uh, Miserable and cold weather in Manchester. Hope you're all well and enjoying your lovely weather. Take care. And James Hughes is watching. Nice to see you here, James. Julie Osborne as well. Uh, Yvonne Monroe is watching. Nice to see you there. Uh, Mark Stewart is watching as well. Wendy Jane Elbridge is watching. Alan Short is watching. Uh, Claire Coleman, nice to see you. Paul Green is also watching from over there in Sylvie. Nice to see you here. Um, Julia Hanron says, uh, I had COVID just before Christmas and I myself are still going through breathing problems along with aching joints. Horrible to have, but getting there. Anyway, nice to have. I didn't realize that you'd actually contracted the, I've met a few people online who've contracted the virus and I mean properly contracting it, not just tested positive and uh, not felt anything, but actually had the symptoms been off work, been in quarantine, and some some people actually uh, quite low um, and uh, obviously having to call a doctor out because they felt they were getting worse rather than better. So thank you for that, Julie. I wasn't aware that you were in that situation. Um, 
Anyway, oh, here's one for you. Thank you, Mike Gattenley. Nice for you to say that. Uh, the deputy mayor has been seen walking around Sylvie after being tested positive and should have been in quarantine. Cheers for that, fella. I, I don't know about that story. One thing I will say, when we talk about deputy mayors, just something to clear up. Deputy mayor is not one deputy mayor along with the mayor. There are deputy mayors from what were the old prefectures here on the island. And we used to have five prefectures. One was Lagana. The other was Zanti Town. Then we had one in Arcadia, which is Sylvie. Uh, we also then had one in Volimez at the north of the island. And I think we also had one uh, in uh, the Alicanaz, Alikez areas as well. So we had about five of these what we called mayors. They all ran things their own way in each of the different prefectures. Uh, and then uh, back in about 2000, and I think it was about 2008, uh, the then Prime Minister, uh, who was, oh, oh God, oh, Papandreou, decided to streamline local administration and have one mayor responsible for everything with deputy mayors from the other little prefectures uh, who would basically have to toe the line and uh, and and do what they were told from the from the the super mayor as he was nicknamed at the time so again um i'll look into that story uh mike i'm not going to say too much about it uh just to make sure that we have got the right mayor uh that is uh, that was seen walking around because nothing's been i've seen reported in the local media here uh, and uh, I, I, again I've got to be very careful what I say at times because there are people out there who are looking either to get you took down or to shout you down uh, because uh, at times they think they may know best but anyway cheers for that I, I will check on that story for you anyway Les Paul over there in Florida is tuning in nice to see you looking in uh, Les I hope I'm not uh, preaching too much for you <laughs> and uh, yes, I will get this up online on YouTube uh, as soon as I finish doing this broadcast. Anyway, Julie Halloran has said, um, I had COVID. Oh, I think I've already had that one. Uh, they have that one there. Uh, morning, Ginge. Uh, Hillary Rogers. I think I may have got through everybody. Have I gone everybody? Jane McGrath is also watching. Nice to see you here as well. Um, Julie's also saying, I love Greece. I can't wait to get back out there. It's like my second home, lovely place and lovely people. Heather Nash is also uh, somebody else who uh, contracted the virus. She's also looking in. Nice to see you there, Heather. Uh, Rainy Mitchell is also watching. Julie Amstel. Lyndon as well is watching. Nice to see you, Lyndon. And Les Paul says... Preach it. Thank you, Les. <laughs> I think that is fantastic. Alan Cy Grinley in Wendover in Buckinghamshire. Nice to see you as well. Right, listen, um, I've got to say um, uh, thank you for the people who passed comment about Captain Tom on my Facebook page. I was very moved by that. Um, the Northern Soul Show, which was on Beach Radio, is now up online. You can just push the play button on my Facebook page and it will play for you. And uh, don't forget this afternoon, I have got my, um, I've got my uh, requests and inspiration show. I've got quite a lot of requests at the moment, but I can always do with more. i tell you what I am looking for. I'm looking for a jukebox memory, a tune from a jukebox, uh, wherever it may be in the world. Do you remember a jukebox in a bar or in a hotel or even in someone's house? Uh, they used to hear a tune being played and it, it struck a chord with you. Tell me where the jukebox was, what the tune was and uh, the, the reason it struck a chord. And I will pop that in the show this afternoon um, and I'd love to have one of those. But anyway, I'm going to have to go now. There's a lot to be done because the weather's so good. I've also got to clear up the veranda where the chickens have left their calling card. And I will see you later. I'll keep my ear to the ground and see what's happening and let you know. Anyway, you stay safe and have a good morning. I'll catch you later. ta -ra.